stats now. Not a good shooting night for either squad, but it was that last five minutes where the Nets were on that 15-zip run where they were able to pull away from the Miami Heat. And moments ago, the hero for Brooklyn, James Harden, met up with the media. Last game, you said that it's almost a luxury that you don't have to shoot to win the games anymore. Does that help you at all mentally when you do want to then turn that on because you know you don't necessarily have to? You help. Yeah, but then you know it's the other way as well. In the sense of I gotta still be aggressive. You know, I still I still gotta look at the rim and and shoot my shot and, and get to the rim and get into the paint and create shots for my teammates. So, um, you know, I'm figuring it out. You know, it's only been five games and that's what we have a long season for. So, once you know, we all find that balance. Um, you know, our team will be we will be way better. Um, but it's still early. We're just trying to, uh, as we learn, we're trying to you know rack up as many wins as we can. So it's a great feeling when you can do both. Greg Logan with Newsday. Uh, James, you said you've been focused on playmaking, and that's been clear so far. But could you just sense uh, the other two guys, uh, Kevin and Kai, struggling tonight, and did that kind of? Uh, prompt you to take over the way you did tonight in the fourth. Yeah, I just wanted to be a little bit more aggressive. You know, obviously, you know, Kevin and Kai are really, you know, you know, really, really good scorers. Um, you know, easy shots that, we, that they missed tonight that they normally make. Um, so it was fourth quarter. You know, the game was getting close, and, and we kept going back and forth. We, we, were, we had plenty of opportunities to take the lead, um, you know, to a higher number, and they just kept climbing back. So we wanted to, you know, finish the fourth quarter off the right way, and I think we did that for, uh, defensively. We had 14 points, and offensively, just wanted to be aggressive with my shot. Christian Winfield with the New York Daily News. Hey, James, it looks like you have a, a good level of communication out there with Reggie Perry. Just curious what you make of this game and how you're trying to kind of like, obviously he's a rookie, drafted late in the second round. He's kind of thrown into the fire. How do you? How are you kind of trying to help him along? That's the perfect phrase, thrown into the fire. <laughs> he, uh, but, I mean, he's learning. He listens, he learns, uh, he works his butt off, and that's all you can ask for a young guy. Um, so I just try to help him be in positions to be successful, whether it's, uh, you know, screening angles or, you know, um, areas around the basket to be when I'm when, when, when you know, our guards drive. Um, defensively, just a little bit of everything. You know, I don't want to overwhelm him, but I want to just help him out a little bit. So, uh, at the end of the day, he still can be himself and go play freely. But um, you know, positioning-wise, can be be more uh, be more active. Alex Schiffer with the Athletic. Hey, James, you, you touched on this a little bit, but you mentioned the offensive struggles. Was that mainly with their zone? You think that gave you guys most struggles? Was it other stuff that that led to some of that? Zone. So, Zone. I mean, I mean, we just had a. There's, there's going to be nights where we don't, all, you know, shoot the the ball, the ball well. Um, there's going to be very minimum nights where all of us don't shoot the ball well. Um, you know, but that zone, you know, and Cleveland did it. You know, we see Miami do it uh, because you know teams are going to try to slow us down as much as as much as they can. Um, you know, try to throw different looks at us. So once we get adjusted and we see the zone more often, we see different uh, different defensive schemes more often. Then we'll know how to counter them and. Uh, uh, be more efficient offensively. Bruce Beck with NBC New York. James, you made it clear to us from day one that you are here to win. That's that's the goal. That's the number one priority. Are you enjoying the challenge of trying to figure out what you need to do to help this team win the most? Yes, that's the best part of it. You know, that's the best part of it is to, you know, I've been in a, I was in a role for eight years. You know, you know, controlling the ball, dominating the ball. Um, now it's a d different experience for me, but it's it's still great. It's still basketball at the end of the day, and I'm, you know, I'm lucky to be able to do more than just one thing on the basketball court. So, um, you know, it's fun. You know, it's a, like I said before, it's a game within the game. You know, you got to pick and choose when to be aggressive, when to get your shooters going, when you know to let Katie and Kyrie get going. Um, you know, and once we get a rhythm and that flow, and we kind of start to feel, you know, each other out more. Um, you know, it'll be a lot easier for us, and, and our team will have a lot more, um, you know, flow in th throughout the course of the game. Right now, we're, we're trying to find it, and we show really good glimpses of it, but it'll be more consistent. Brian Lewis with the New York Post. Then yeah, following up on that, was that a conversation during the game that you had with KD or Kyrie? Steve said he did not have that conversation with you. Did you have that conversation with them saying, hey, you know, be aggressive, attack, you know, maybe my shot's not here. No. You get yours. No. No. You can't, like, predict what happens throughout the course of the game, you know. So I just, you know, see the game, take it possession by possession, and, um, you know, use my communication as best as I can.
take a look now at James Harden. This is uh, until about three people. Well, Ian Eagle would have loved that because there would have been spillage. spillage. Yes, absolutely. We take a look at the leading scorers now. Bam Adebayo follows up his career high 41 with 26 tonight, so he kept it going. But the Heat lose. Durant and Harden lead the way for the Nets. They combine for 40. The big three combined for 56. Bam Adebayo four points in that fourth quarter, so the Nets did a terrific job from, on him. And then Duncan Robinson. One for ten. Duncan Robinson from Williams College. Same school as George Steinbrenner. You wow. Look at you, Frank Isola. Division and, three, baby, the Nescat. And now look at Steve Nash as he meets the media. Hey, Steve, I guess let's just focus in on James in particular down the stretch, the way he kind of took over for you offensively to win. Uh, you guys were kind of struggling before that. Yeah. Yeah, you know, he was great, obviously, and uh, made some big shots and plays. Um, Starting to see a glimpse of the things he can do uh, scoring the ball. Um, you know, it, like I told the guys after the game, we're, we're a game past the quarter mark. We've played, you know, uh, an incredibly dense schedule. I think we've played more games than anyone in the league. And guys were tired tonight. We couldn't buy a basket. Made, had a lot of good looks. Tired shooting the ball, but also tired in that we were a little stagnant against the zone after a really good performance against it. The other night, so uh, you know, overall, just the fact that they they hung in there and that that James stepped up and made some big shots down the stretch. Brian Lewis with the New York Post. Brian, you're muted. Brian, you're muted. I don't know if you can hear me. All right, let's try Alex yeah, Shipman. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Go ahead, go ahead Brian. Okay. Uh, you had talked earlier about you wanted to be you wanted James to be more aggressive, and you figured this was coming that it would happen. Was this a matter of game flow? And obviously, KD wasn't hitting some of the shots he normally was. Was that game flow, or did he make a conscious decision to get more aggressive, James? I'm saying. Uh, you'd have to ask him. Um, you know, I, I I give James uh, his space offensively. I think I mean he's one of the greatest offensive players to ever play the game. So. I trust in him figuring out where he's at with his game and how he can affect the game. He does so many things manipulating the defense that he, he's such a positive for us, even if he's not scoring. But um, we know how capable a scorer he is. And, you know, he got it going, got a little aggressive, got on a little bit of a roll and made some plays and showed what a tough cover he is. And, you know, that's, that's obviously the place we want him to get where, you know, he's confident and has freedom to create and, uh, and is, is balancing scoring and playmaking. Alex Schiffer with The Athletic. Hey, Steve. You mentioned the guys had a bit of a slow start offensively. And then just as the game went on, you guys continued to, to improve. Was that anything tactical? Or was it simple as shots just starting to go in? You're kind with a, a bit of a slow, slow start. But uh, no, it, it really wasn't tactical. You know, I think, like I said, the, the, the schedule's been, you know, obviously very difficult. Um, like I said, I think we've played the most games in the league. Uh, you could see the mental and physical fatigue a little bit out there tonight. We we're a little bit stagnant. The ball stuck a little bit more. We were, our thoughts were a little bit slower. And, uh, and you know, you add it all up, we couldn't buy a basket. But uh, I was proud of the guys for, for hanging in there and just finding a way to, to give themselves time. And, and obviously Miami was exhausted too. So they, they, uh, they didn't shoot the ball well either. And, uh, but the most important thing is that our guys uh, found a way to, to combat all those, those ways that we could have, you know, found an excuse to lose this game. We, and we kept plugging away. We guarded. Second half, I think we gave up 40 points, 14 in the fourth. And, uh, and then our offense kind of picked up at the end there. But, you know, it was uh, one of those tricky games. And like I keep saying, you know, we're going to see games like this throughout the season. You know, we've seen all sorts of crazy scores, crazy upsets, uh, a lot of people hovering around 500, and that's just the nature of this season, and we have to be prepared to, to win some of these games when, you know, you're, you're not feeling it. Greg Logan with news. Uh, Steve, did you uh, change anything defensively in the fourth period? You, you got 10 straight stops during that 15-0 run. Was that just because Miami was... Uh, a little undermanned tonight, or or did your guys step it up uh, on defense? I mean, the coaching was outstanding, Greg. I would say <laughs> first and foremost. Um, no, I, uh, you know, look, I think you had two tired teams out there, um, and 
our guys stepped up to the challenge when they were when they were tired. I thought, you know, Bam got going a little bit for a minute, and then Jeff stepped up and really uh, did a great job making it difficult for him. But the rest of the guys off the ball were diligent. You know, it's. it's Kept it very simple defensively, and uh, they did a good job down the stretch. Bruce Beck with NBC New York. Steve, you have the top three scorers in the league in the fourth quarter. What is it like to have that option, and do you know who it's going to be on a given night, or is it just kind of play out? Uh, you know, it's uh, that's – well, it's the way this team is built. Uh, we 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 went for it and, and have three great great offensive players. So, you know, on any given night, it could be any one of them, or it could be Joe Harris. Uh, you know, it could be someone else. So, um, those guys also make each other and their teammates better by the attention they draw. So, it's about trying to find that collective threat. You know, by the ball moving, by spatial uh, awareness and understanding, and making each other. Um, better through collectively. So, it, you know, on, on certain nights, our guys are so capable of getting hot that it could be any one of them. But uh, the idea is that it's not a, it's his turn tonight. It's that emerges and we welcome it, but it's, we're going to play good basketball. We're going to create good opportunities and we're going to step up and shoot the ball. And, and uh, if we create good opportunities more times than not, we'll be in a good position. Christian Winfield with the New York Daily News. Hey, Coach, you know, uh, when, when Sean spoke shortly after the, the trade, you know, he said the, the, the hole in the roster that trading Jared created gives room for somebody else to kind of seize the moment and, and try to make, you know, I guess, a name for themselves. What have you seen from Reggie in his minutes? You know, I mean, obviously he's a rookie and he's kind of been thrown into the fire, but just what have you seen from him out there? And have, have you seen any type of maybe chemistry building between him and James out there? It looks like they're trying to figure themselves out on him. Yeah, I mean, look, I'm a fan of Reggie's. You know, I think he's, if I'm honest, struggling a little bit um, out there, and that's to be expected. You know, he's he's in his first like 120 minutes in the NBA, and so whatever it is, so you know, you have to give him time to adapt to the game and in short minutes. You know, he's a guy that was a top prospect his whole life, played the whole game, does whatever he wants, and now he's got to fill in a role and adapt to the NBA game. So. Um, you know, I, but I'm a fan. He he can shoot, he can pass, he can dribble. Uh, you know, he's a versatile five in, in the modern game. But you know, he he's still a young kid trying to figure out how he fits into a team with stars. So it's uh, it's something that's going to take time with Reggie. But um, you know, I believe in him, and I think he's got a, a bright future. Malika Andrews with ESPN. Uh, Steve, coming into tonight, James, Kevin, and Kyrie all ranked in the top five for minutes in a game since James joined this team. Is that something you're kind of resigned to, that these stars are just going to get a lot of miles on their body, or is it something you're kind of monitoring to try to change throughout the rest of the season? No, we definitely want to monitor it and avoid, you know, the, that that type of uh... – you know, minutes. It's uh, it's difficult as we try to sort out our second unit and rotations um, because you get in the game and you know if you have a chance to win, you want to win and you want to try to to play the guys that are going to get you that win. Uh, but I definitely don't want to you know overdo it and play them too much. So that's tricky. Um, and they're competitive. And when you take them out, they're not happy. And <laughs> So you, we're trying to find that line of like we need to win games, but we also need to preserve them for later in the season, and we've had an incredibly difficult stretch.